Hi, it's Kamen with s and today we're gonna be installing our placement tank on this 2020 Ram Crew Cab Long Bed. This fits all 2013 and up Ram uh, Crew Cab Long Bed trucks. And um, if you already did purchase the s and tank, make sure to uh, take a look at our installation car that came in the box. And when you get this, scan this with the camera on your phone and it'll take you to the link for the most up-to-date install instructions. First, we're gonna remove the hose clamps on the filler and the vent hoses. Um, those are found right up here, right behind the, the DEF um, tank fill in the vent lines. So with a flathead screwdriver, we're gonna get those loosened up and pulled off. If those hose clamps are facing a hard to reach location with the screwdriver, you can also use an eight millimeter socket. And next, there's a rollover valve on the rear part of the tank. That rear rollover valve has a, a nylon line that goes all the way up to the filler neck and it's connected by two zip ties here and further up on the top. We're gonna snip those zip ties because that rollover line will not be reused. Now, if you're doing the install on a lift, we'll be raising the jack into place underneath the tank to put pressure on the underside of the tank so we can remove the front, the front and the rear strap. Um, if you're not doing this on a lift, you're gonna wanna skip ahead into the install inst installation instructions where we're removing the electrical connector and the feed and the return line off the top of the tank. We're gonna wait and do that until we lower the tank about six to eight inches so we can get our hand in there um, to remove those connectors easier. Next, with a 16 mil deep socket and an extension, we'll be removing the nut on the front bracket. And before lowering the tank, unclip the DEF fill and the um, vent lines if, you, if your truck is equipped with a DEF tank. Right here underneath the carrier bearing and right here at the midway point on the tank. Just pull down on these. And then back here, there's a clip that pops up. Then you can pull the D DEF lines out of that clip. Now we're gonna lower the tank about six to eight inches so we can remove the electrical connector, the feed, and the return line. Then you are able to remove one of the fuel connectors from right here. So you can follow that down to figure out which one that is on the sending unit. But the other one you'll have to remove directly on the sending unit. So to remove it, you'll slide these two fingers out and up. Then there's a button on the back. And to press that button, press in on the fuel filter housing and then separate. They do like to stick on there sometimes, so it might take a few attempts and some patience. So when removing the electrical connector, we use a screwdriver to push out on this red clip. And so this red clip is now released. To press this button and gently slid it off. Then this is the other fuel line that we released and I'll show you how we did that on the tank over here. To release that fuel line, you simply depress these two tabs and just pull the line off. Next, we'll be removing the uh, retaining ring, ring from the OEM SIN unit. So we're gonna be hitting this counterclockwise with a dead blow and a pry bar. Once we have it loose, we'll remove the ring because we'll be using a new s &B ring. We'll find the included OEM O-ring. Place that into the s &B tank. And we already did this, but make sure you check the inside of the s &B tank for any foreign debris. Stick your hand in there, a flashlight, phone, take some pictures to make sure that nothing got inside the tank during um, assembly or, or shipping. Now we'll be, we'll be removing the OEM sending unit. We already have our O-ring in the SMB tank, so we'll leave this green OEM O-ring in there. And we'll drop this in. Be careful of the float. Okay. 
using the SMB locking ring. Place this over, put down pressure on the O-ring and gently rotate it until it starts underneath the receiving uh, teeth on the SMB tank. Once the retaining ring is started underneath the teeth, we'll hit the ring clockwise. And the finished position is once this uh, impression is underneath this indent here. So once it's passed, now it can't rotate back. Now to make sure that we've got a good positive seal on our O-ring and there's no other leaks coming from the tank, we're gonna spray soapy water around the O-ring area. We're gonna block off these ports with either tape or with some buddy's hands. And then puncturing the cap with a screwdriver or a pick. We're gonna pressurize the tank. Now pressurize the tank. To make sure you don't hear or see anything, especially around this area. And just enough pressure to almost expand the walls of the tank slightly. And we don't see anything, so uh, the tank is good to be put in the truck. Now we're gonna uh, remove the fill and the vent, uh, vent lines. We're gonna move this over onto the SMB tank so remember the orientation that it is in. And we're gonna re remove the vent so we can use the, um, the hose clamp on this vent for the uh, vent line provided on the SMB tank. And before putting the filler onto the SMB tank, place this inlet check valve inside the filler hose with the blue arrow pointing into the tank. Now we're gonna remove the vent line to get this hose clamp. And we are gonna install this hose clamp onto the SMB vent line. Now we're ready to put the SMB tank into the truck. When we're jacking it up into the truck, we're gonna make sure that this filler tube goes over this cross member and doesn't get pinched underneath, uh, underneath this. So we're gonna lift it over when we get to this point. And this might be easier to do before the tank's actually in place, but now we're gonna be, re, uh, we're gonna be installing the SMB included straps onto the tank. So for the front strap, it's hard to get it into that, that strap cradle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna straighten out the last bend. Once it's straight, we're gonna stick it up there and let it fall right into place. So I don't hurt my fingers when trying to get the uh, strap to pass underneath the carrier bearing bracket, I'm gonna use the other end of a dead blow to leverage against the carrier bearing to get this underneath um, that last piece. Now once it's passed, we're gonna get it started on that stud. Now it's lined up with a stud and um, we're gonna find that, uh, that nut to get, the dra to get the strap started onto the stud. So once the stud is poking out of the, the hole in the bracket by hand, we're just gonna get that started. And once it's started by hand, we're gonna tighten up the strap. Now for the rear strap, we won't have to bend this one. We're gonna get this side started first by pushing up on this side more. Then we'll put the, this, the stud through the hole and put the nut on. Wow. 
Now we'll be reconnecting the feed return as well as the electrical connector. You won't be able to see me doing the electrical connector or the return, but we'll snap it this in. Make sure to slide the blue locking tab into the lock position. We'll reach over. Get the fuel connector on as well as the uh, electrical connector and making sure to put the locking tab in. Now we're gonna reconnect the fill as well as the vent lines and tighten up the hose clamp. And lastly, we're gonna zip tie both of these rollover valve breather lines to the filler neck. Then we're gonna trim the end of the zip tie. Make sure there's no sags or kinks in these lines. And we'll trim the end. Thanks for watching. If you have any more questions, please give us a call um, or email us anytime. Thank you.